Depression starts with your mitochondria. How do we know that? The most powerful geographic determinant of the rate of depression and suicide in any given location is altitude. Altitude means less oxygen available. What does oxygen do in your body? It goes into your mitochondria and it facilitates the conversion of food to ATP. So fundamentally, on a geographic level, what we're seeing is that depression is primarily correlated with a lower ability for mitochondria to convert food to ATP. And this is probably explained by the fact that that energy is needed for stress resilience. The following content is not medical advice and is for educational purposes only. Now, if you look at clinical trials of nutritional supplements for depression, one of the most important of those is SAMe. This compound, also known as S-adenosylmethionine, is support for the methylation pathway. And the reason that methylation is important to depression is that methylation is helping provide mental flexibility. We know from functional MRI studies that if there is less methylation in the brain, what happens as a result of that is that when people are exposed to negative images, their emotional center in their amygdala is far more likely to activate with what's called in science a negative emotional valence, which basically means they get emotionally disturbed by what they see. And you can extrapolate from that study and say they're going to get more emotionally disturbed by the things that happen in their life, by the stresses that they're exposed to, by the interactions that they have with other people, by their own thoughts. And the reason that the emotional centers light up more when you have lower methylation is because methylation is altering the stickiness of your brain. It's lowering the stickiness, making it more flexible. And when your brain is flexible enough, you can have a negative emotion or thought that comes through and you just let it go. And so it doesn't bother you. If it gets caught in that net because your brain is so sticky, now you have a greater chance to get emotionally disturbed. But you don't have to. You can fight that off with your prefrontal cortex where you are using your executive control. And you can start to feel that negative emotion, but you can invest energy in fighting it off and saying, no, I will not listen to that negative thought. I refuse to listen to that angry emotion or that sad emotion or that depressing way of thinking, and you can burst it out of your out of your mind. Now, you can see an interplay with this, and you can start to see where just not having enough total energy in your brain is actually going to interfere with that. Because if you're mentally too sticky and the negative thoughts get stuck in your brain a lot, and you have to then exercise power, mental cognitive power in fighting that off... If you don't have the energy reserves, you're not going to be able to do it. And one of the things that we see in people with low methylation in their brain, in their brain is that they get mentally exhausted because they're investing what seems like all the energy they have in their brain in fighting off these negative thoughts. And if they can't do it, if they give up too easily, those negative thoughts overcome them and that can then interact and synergize to produce a chronic problem of depression. Now, if we look at the methylation pathway, one of the things that we'll see is how do you get SAMe when you're not taking it as a supplement? You have an amino acid called methionine. And every time that methionine contributes to methylation, it converts into an amino acid called homocysteine. And in order to recycle that, you need a compound called methylfolate. And that famous MTHFR gene, which many people have, is an impairment in the ability to make methylfolate. But you don't just need MTHFR to make methylfolate. What else do you need? You need mitochondrial conversion of food to ATP to turn the folate into methylfolate. If you don't do that, no matter how good your MTHFR is, if you don't have mitochondrial ATP production, you aren't going to make any methylfolate. If you don't make methylfolate, you're not going to be able to convert homocysteine to methionine. Now, let's say you do have methionine. There are multiple ways to skin a cat, right? You could just eat a steak and you'll get plenty of methionine. 
But are, is that going to support methylation if you don't have mitochondrial ATP production? Absolutely not. Because now you need your mitochondria to convert food to ATP in order to convert methionine to s methionine or SAMe. So what are we seeing when clinical studies are showing that supplementing with SAMe outperforms even SSRIs and other antidepressant drugs, or at least is just as good as, as them in battling depression, what we're seeing is that the product of the methylation pathway that required at least one use of mitochondrial ATP production, if not two, to make is helping make people more mentally flexible so they don't have to invest as much brain ATP in fighting off the negative thoughts that lead to depression. The problem with just willy-nilly supplementing with SAMe, though, is that although it is profoundly effective on average, it is not without its problems. It has an extremely high rate of gastrointestinal distress, and there are some people that develop other problems with it, like new onset mania. So what we really want to be doing in order to battle depression is optimize mitochondrial conversion of food to ATP so that you have just enough SAMe that you need and you don't have to take high doses to disturb your gastrointestinal function because you're actually making it in your brain so it's not causing any problems and your brain is not going to overmake it and cause new onset mania. Your brain with optimized mitochondrial function is going to make exactly how much you need.